Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so I'm Helen. Um, I work at NDRC, and I'm delighted to be here at UCD uh, this morning. Thanks for the invitation. Um, as a former alumnus of UCD, it's always a great pleasure to be back in, in Belfield. Um, so, as Dave said, I'm going to talk to you a little bit uh, about science, um, commercialising science, um, and hopefully we can all um, have a, a great discussion afterwards and hopefully inspire um, some people here today to potentially be the founders or co-founders of the next great uh, disruptive science venture. Um, I'm going to frame the discussion um, around uh, NDRC um, on our, and the Science Accelerator Program Venture Lab, but I'll sprinkle it with uh, my experience to date um, at NDRC over the last uh, five years and, and try and give you a flavour of some of the challenges that science-based ventures um, uh, come across um, and, and what we do at NDRC to help uh, these companies move, fo move forward. Um, so if you haven't heard from NDRC, I'm going to assume that a lot of people here are, are not that familiar with it. Um, but our, our mission, um, we, are, we are a private organisation, um, but we have a public fund and our mission is to create uh, market capital uh, by building a new companies uh, and new ventures. Um, we have an extremely hands-on uh, uh, team uh, that gets really involved uh, with any of the propositions and any of the companies that we invest in. Um, we have a dedicated space at the digital hub um, on Crane Street um, and we also have an investment fund so to date we have 42 and a half million under management um, our primary fund is uh, from the Department of Communications Energy and, and Natural Resources um, but because we're private we do have the flexibility to operate as a commercial entity and that gives us um, uh, great opportunities to do new exciting and perhaps experimental stuff as well so I thought um, it might be good to show you and to share with you um, um, a video um, that gives you an impression of the space. So rather than me um, talk and dive straight into a presentation, um, when I talk about the space that's NDRC and Venture Lab and the people and the startups that we invest in, I think this video will give you an impression of what that, what that is like and you can maybe, uh, as we're talking, imagine yourselves um, as founders of the startups that you'll see in this video. So, just one sec. We make ventures that solve big problems. We make ventures ready for investment. We make ventures that have strong teams. We make ventures that will grow and scale. We make ventures happen. NDRC is an investor in early stage innovation. We invest in ideas which are strong enough to show strong commercial possibilities, but at a stage before any seed investors get involved. Space is one of the biggest intangibles in a great accelerator, and what we've done here is create a really, really cool space where startups can actually network with each other. So what they get from each other is as important as what they get from the program itself. We work in partnership with all of our investors benefit for our companies is they get advice from very experienced investors. benefit for investors is they get an early window on our pipeline, uh, which enables them to make better investment decisions. The NDLC team works right across all of the activities that take place here, and every person who works for NDRC in some way works with our startups. So we all have backgrounds in things like product marketing and product management, investment, um, we have entrepreneurs who've started and sold on their businesses themselves, um, people with the broad range of expertise that it takes to get a startup business off the ground. I'm Ben, I work for NDRC. I'm Carl, I work for NDRC. I'm Grace and I work for NDRC. I'm Mark and I work for NDRC. I'm Sharon, I work for NDRC. I'm Dan and I work for NDRC. I'm Helen and I work for NDRC. I'm Gary, I work for NDRC. I'm Amy and I work for NDRC. I'm Douglas, I work for NDRC. I'm Sarah and I work for NDRC. I'm John and I work for NDRC. Hey, hey. Mentorship is a really important part of what we do at NDRC. We focus an awful lot on the business model and we have four core mentors who focus on key aspects of that business model, so the sales, the value proposition, the go-to-market strategy, and most importantly, the financial elements of scaling the business. We also have a wider network that we plug into as well, entrepreneurs who've already done this before, investors, and subject matter experts. 
starting your own business is one of the most difficult things you can do. So to be in an environment where there's lots of different people with the same challenges and um, you also learn so much from the mentors because they're, you know, they're world-class mentors, they're really experienced people. When PMD Solutions first engaged with the NDRC, we worked with the Venture Lab team in developing PMD's value proposition and also the business model behind the company. And the NDRC team took up a real role of receives attitude in supporting the company in any way possible. One of the important things for NDRC is our focus on teams. One of the really great things that we do is bring the right people together to work on startup ventures. Property Gate is an asset management and analytic platform for financial institutions and large property holders. Without NDRC, we wouldn't have a team in Property Gate. The NDRC team can be rightly proud of our results to date. Over 150 ventures have emerged from our activities here and those 150 ventures have been successful in securing over 32 million in follow-on investment. That's a key indicator of how strong those ventures are. In fact, close to 60% of our ventures will be successful and are successful in securing follow-on investment. That follow-on investment has enabled those companies as a whole to grow to a portfolio valuation of over 100 million. Those figures are significant figures, we're very proud of them, but they also show the value again of the offering that we're bringing uh, to make those ventures happen. So these are some of the figures that Ben, our CEO, mentioned in the video. Um, and what's important is that you know th some of the international recognition that NDRC is getting when it comes to doing the right things uh, to to uh, for, for science commercialization. So we're the number one ICT university business accelerator, and that's a really important. Um, um, award for us um, and the fact that our f investment fund grew uh, again last year as well means that there's a strong belief in what NDRC does and our activities um, and we hope that that will continue so uh, even since we recorded that video um, some f some further announcements of follow-on investment uh, in our ventures have uh, have been announced and uh, th we're over 120 million now in in, uh, uh, in projected market capital uh, for this year so uh, we've been investing in science and technology specifically and propositions that were the core proposition is focused on, on no novel defensible IP for a number of years. Uh, but we formalized our activity um, in an accelerator uh, in, in 2013 um, when we founded uh, uh, Venture Lab. So you're mainly scientists all here today. Um, when you think of you know, the world and technology today, you know, we tend to think of big uh, you know, technology breakthroughs and you know, where big investments happen, you know, the WhatsApps of the world and Twitter and Facebook buying and acquiring and so on. And it's not just about uh, technology, digital technology, mobile um, and, and apps. Uh, for a moment, if you could just imagine, you know, uh, Things like fi financial and computational analysis really affecting how energy is bought and sold or predicting the price of, of, pr of particular energy commodities or uh, a medical device that monitors every single breath of a patient um, when they're, when they're in, an, in a hospital environment to try and uh, monitor uh, uh, changes in, in that patient's um, behaviour through their hospital stay as a key indicator of, uh, of something changing for that patient um, other than just uh, pulse and so on or a nano platform a na nanotechnology um, um, patterning technology that can actually uh, uh, create uh, patterns uh, on surfaces that you know that aren't semiconductor surfaces that aren't flat that, that they're they're curved they're things like coins or jewelry um, uh, the, the inside of materials um, that might help in the food and beverage industry so these are all kind of technologies that have real world applications and these aren't just projects these are a flavor of some of the the technologies that NDRC has invested in um, uh, through the venture lab program I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the companies behind these um, in, a, in, in a while so at NDRC we know, uh, as well as many of the people in this room, will know that commercialization of anything is hard. Um, we've certainly formed a very strong view that commercialization of science is uh, particularly hard for a couple of reasons, okay, because it needs a, a magic mix of ingredients, uh, a certain set of things to, to make uh, that science venture, that science-based venture really successful. It needs disruptive science, okay, so an incremental, uh, an incremental change in, in science isn't good enough. It, it needs a monumental disruptive uh, step change uh, um, 
in, in, in the science behind it. It also needs to be proven, okay? It, it needs to be shown to be safe, um, that the, it, it's been de-risked, um, that it can actually be commercially applied, um, and, and to that end, it, it, there needs to be proof points for that. Um, intellectual property is a, is, a, is a key ingredient as well, making sure that uh, the science proposition um, can be defended in a, in a very competitive market um, where you're likely to come across big giants um, along the way. So it's really important to have a strong IP. Also having capital, okay, making sure that you have sufficient funds uh, to get your venture to the next technical and commercial milestone in tandem. Um, Customers, like the right type of customers, the customers who are willing to take uh, a leap of faith and, and try out your technology when nobody else um, will. But somebody who, a customer that actually uh, can, can buys into the value that, that, that you're proposing. And, and finally, team. Um, as the video, as Amy was saying in the video, you know, we place a lot of focus on team um, um, in, in all of our accelerator programs. We tend not to. Uh, invest in single founder teams, it's always better to have two or three and it's not just because it's better fun in a crowd, well there's that as well, but uh, team diversity is shown um, through our um, successes anyway, t uh, that where, there's, where there's strong um, founding teams of, t of two or three, uh, those ventures tend to do, to, to do better. Um, so there's a lot of science, um, a small percentage um, of that science is actually fit for a startup and there's kind of a number of risks there. There's the technology risk, the market risk, the incentive risk and, and the team. So what we try to do um, in Venture Lab uh, before we make an investment is to address all of these risks. We take, a, we take a look at people's propositions, even their earliest, earliest stage of I at idea formation, maybe things that you're considering right now. Um, we, we talk to you about it now and try to figure out um, from our perspective perspective anyway, uh, what the, the, the major risks are that you might face along the road and, and try to get you to consider those risks and how you might uh, address and overcome some of those barriers um, at the earliest possible stage. And it's really to set the scene for commercialization as early as possible. It's not about getting to a particular research milestone and then saying, okay, now I'm ready for commercialization. You've, in our experience, you've got to be thinking about that um, much earlier. And I think even in my own experience, when I tried to commercialize my own PhD, um, about 12, uh, 13 years ago, um, the, the, the challenge was that you, you, you needed to be com thinking about commercially, you needed to be thinking about how to commercialise um, as early as possible. Um, so I think there, there, there's key aspects there that we try to look at. So we believe that Venture Lab changes the game. We piloted the programme last year and we had a small sample of companies coming onto the programme. We had four. Um, and our goal for those four companies was to get all of them um, uh, to, in, to, to the next stage investment. And of those four companies, uh, three of them um, are just closing uh, their next rounds of investment. So we think it's, it, it's, a, it's a great success. Um, where we, built, we built teams um, in certain cases as well, um, where there wasn't a, um, a lead entrepreneur, we made introductions. Um, so we, we, we have a connected network um, and that, that's growing and very, very active. Um, that's a network of um, investors, um, entrepreneurs, um, the technology transfer offices um, that w we get to know uh, really well and, and, and share as much information um, as we can to try and all, because we're all trying to get to the same end goal. Um, we're very close, uh, work very closely with the government agencies like EI and SFI um, uh, and also the customers as well. Um, we're, we believe that Venture Lab changes the game to an extent. We have, um, we, we have investment, okay, so we have, um, our, our offer is 100k investment and that's significantly more than um, uh, 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 um, other accelerators, even our own other accelerator launch pad um, would offer um, at that stage. Be and, and the reason f for it being larger um, is because the, the challenges in terms of uh, building teams and getting to technical and commercial milestones for science ventures in our belief is greater. Um, that investment comes in the form of a loan, um, which also is a very uh, straightforward and simple instrument um, to, to, to offer companies at that stage. Um, there's an incentive as well, so it's six months residential in a cohort at our facility um, at, um, I I at the Digital Hub. Um, we work very much on um, 
uh, a, a number of aspects. So the, the investment proposition, the business model, the leadership skills of the CEO, so the, the CEO who will lead this venture uh, to the next stage. Um, um, and we spend a tremendous amount of time challenging um, and breaking assumptions and testing assumptions and getting customers to validate that. Um, so if you asked any of the, the current uh, cohort of Venture Lab um, uh, um, of CEOs, you know, what were their experiences was, they're, they're probably going to say something like it was, it's very challenging, it's very demanding um, um, and it's um, a big time commitment as well. Um, so the other aspect is that it's dedicated. So um, NDRC staff, um, somebody described us as a, like being another founder in the team. Um, so we get to know the propositions uh, so well and we're all, uh, we all share in the same dream, I suppose, for each of those ventures to get them to the next stage. And to that end, through the hands-on activities that we do through our workshops or mentoring, um, or just generally just sitting down having a coffee or even going for a drink, um, we, we get to know these propositions and the people behind them um, really, really well. And we all share the same, um, same goal there. Um, so the stage where NDRC um, invests, where Venture Lab invests, is typically um, uh, research funding that um, the universities um, will be very familiar with, such as um, SFI's TIDA or EI's Com Fund. So the outputs of that um, are normally very attractive to us. Others include, you know, research centres or other EU funds, um, and then. In turn, when things come through Venture Lab, so we bridge them across the gap, and then they in turn become really attractive to other EI um, grant funding, such as uh, high potential startup um, uh, matched investment or VC investment, um, seed, Series A, and so on. So the investor community here in Ireland and and internationally are very attracted to the outputs of NDRC because of the success rate so far. Um, so part of the whole, uh, once you get into the to the network, um, the benefits of that network can be tremendous as well. So what we look for is world-class scientists, um, Ireland's um, and, and internationally uh, the brightest and best um, scientists who have um, uh, disruptive uh, technologies or dreams of disruptive technologies at their fingertips. Um, we also look for world-class entrepreneurs. We do not expect that every scientist needs to be the CEO of the next venture. In most cases, the, the scientist would like to remain as the scientist, as the CSO, um, and we work to try and construct the best um, startup teams um, that can bring those ventures to the next stage. So that's it's really important for us. Um, we also look for the novel defensible um, science. We need a big, big market opportunity. Okay, it's got to really have some huge impact in a growing um, uh, or big market. And we want the investments to be um, investor ready within six to nine months. Okay, so we don't want any ventures coming into our program and then hitting a cliff at the end of it and and uh, and starving because they have uh, starving and dying because they have no money. So we work from the very first day of our interactions um, on the the investment case. Um, we get the ventures and the teams to meet the investor community. Um, and to become more and more familiar with them and to really test what the milestones are that would attract follow-on investment. So we piloted Venture Lab um, last year and we currently are um, shortlisting. We have our shortlist for Venture Lab 2, which is going to start in April. Um, and Venture Lab, it's a nine-month cycle, so um, throughout the rest of the year, my, my particular role at NGRC is to, to source and find uh, strong and exciting investment opportunities that would fit the profile for Venture Lab. Um, so uh, we'll be sourcing again and shortlisting later on in the year for Venture Lab 3. Um, we are really open to the types of technologies that we like to invest in. Obviously the D in NDRC is digital, um, but that uh, is, is uh, pretty broad and this isn't even a, uh, as the, the, the bottom says it's not an exhaustive list but we're we're seeing a lot more um, interest in you know from from bio bioinformatics um, which is obviously of interest to you guys um, the other things that we've invested in are you know med tech connected health um, 
uh, semiconductors, nano patterning, um, uh, the list goes on. There's a real broad mix of a uh, real diverse portfolio now and I think the, the next crop of, of um, Venture Lab investees uh, will also highlight that diversity as well which is really good actually for the teams that are that are coming in into the into the cohort to have a, a domain mixture in there as well so I thought I'd just go through two companies because their stories are kind of interesting um, there's a, a company called Optrace that we invested in um, earlier in 2013 so this was um, um, holography technology it was a, um, a real step change in how holograms can be printed um, be the, the scientists behind it had worked on this technology for I'd say somewhere between eight and ten years it was technology uh, funded by SFI and EI um, at DIT um, the, the scientific team are like leading experts in the area of holography. They have tried to sit me down and explain the ins and outs of holography a number of times, and I still don't think I'm, I think I'm about an inch into understanding uh, what they know. They have had always had, um, they could really see the benefit of their technology um, uh, uh, in, in, in the real world. They knew that there was real world market applications in the anti-counterfeiting market um, and they tried to commercialise it but they knew that they needed uh, another wheel on the wagon. They knew that they needed a leading uh, CEO, an entrepreneur to take this out, that they weren't going to be the team that would actually take this out into the market. So we introduced them to a gentleman called Stephen MacDonald. The team met a number of times um, and decided that they would get on, that they got on with each other and that Stephen might be the appropriate person um, to, to take this technology out um, and through DIT um, he executed the license, the company was formed, um, they got to know us at Venture Lab, they worked with us you know for about three or four months prior to the final pitch, um, they took space at our, at our facility as well um, and we worked with them um, before they pitched to our investment committee and they were successful in achieving um, 100k um, investment and coming onto the program. So that's, um, and they're just about to, to close around um, uh, at this stage. So it was, it's a good story about science that's at the research base um, and it, I suppose a little bit of serendipity as well, it was the right time, Stephen was the right person. Um, but our network makes, uh, and our active network makes sure that we can do pattern matching um, with technologies and people and entrepreneurs that we potentially meet. Now we're not s saying at all that every, uh, any of the technologies that comes from the research base that we have to match with an entrepreneur. In some cases the entrepreneur is already that scientist, but where there isn't a fit we'll, we'll try and find um, somebody to, to lead that out. Um, this next one is the respiratory monitor that I was um, mentioning earlier on. Um, Miles is um, a really enthusiastic entrepreneur um, from Cork. Um, he uh, w worked together with uh, CIT and developed um, this really neat um, respiratory monitor that I his big vision for it is to be slapped onto every patient as they come into a hospital and it will monitor the, the, the respiratory rate as a, as a vital. So at the moment nurses would, would look at patients um, and, and monitor their chest going up and it completely varies um, as you can imagine. Um, but the accuracy that um, Miles' technology is delivering um, means that there's a really, really strong chance that something like this could have a significant impact um, on patient care. So he's working at the moment through um, regulatory hoops and getting clinical validation um, and again has been successful in achieving uh, follow-on investment. So they were just two, they're a little bit different, the CEO profiles were different, their, their journey is slightly different but ultimately um, through working with the, the program and working at NGRC um, they're, they're getting closer to, 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 their, to their next stage. So this is us, this is the, the Venture Lab team, it's Dan, John, myself, Magella and Carl. We all have um, experience either founding startups or having uh, senior roles in in startups or SMEs and we're all from the private sector and most of us have a background um, in either uh, engineering computer science uh, we're not 
bioinformaticians, <laughs> um, but we do have a strong sense of um, a, a strong grounding in technology, and that's what really interests us. Um, we're very interested in, in science, technology, um, and step change and is, is in that. Over the, the last few years, we're growing our own domain expertise, and where we don't have domain expertise, we, we bring that into the team as well to make sure that we're uh, correctly validating um, ideas. So uh, if you can't get a hold of me um, at all, although I do spend a lot of time here at UCD, if you can't get a hold of me, the, the rest of the team is there, and I really strongly, strongly encourage anybody or people you might know to, to reach out to us. Um, we have a, a large um, mentor and partnership um, uh, panel that works with us through the programme, so you'll see a lot of the investors there, um, other companies and founders of startups um, that are interested in working um, uh, alongside some of our, our, our startups as well. Um, and we, we have facilitators that come in um, to deliver certain content as well. Um, so we have about 15 consulting mentors, um, hundreds of entrepreneurs, advisors and customer contacts and just actually being in the building you frequently see uh, one startup team talking to another startup team and everybody's always exchanging information or seeing how they can help the next team move forward or giving them an introduction so there's a, a really good, good positive vibe. Um, there's 14 uh, staff in total at NDRC. Um, and um, we're you know, a key player at this stage. We're well established now. Uh, we're a key player both here in Ireland um, and in, 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 in Europe. Um, and we've received some um, um, uh, US-based um, accolades as well in the last number of years as well. So um, where we spend our time is, you know, on this kind of this kind of stuff as you'd imagine. So it's not just about business model or lean business model activities. Uh, we do a lot of work on customer discovery, um, leadership profiles, negotiations. So we want the CEOs um, to understand or how we want to best equip them to negotiate because uh, negotiating a license is maybe one aspect, but ne negotiating with an investor um, uh, can, can also be a, a, um, an arduous task. Um, we spend a lot of time on sales pipelines. Um, I spend a lot of my own experience has been in international sales. Um, so making sure that our teams are best equipped to understand what prospecting, lead generation, um, and, and qualification of customers um, actually means. So that's a little different to customer discovery, okay, where you're actually just finding customers with, with, with an active sales pipeline, you're actually trying to close and win business. Um, and then some of the other aspects that we work on there, Ms. Conscious of Time. Um, our approach, as you can imagine at this stage, is very hands-on, it's iterative, it's testing, it's coming back, revisiting stuff. Um, and we support a fail-fast mechanism, you know, so if things don't work, they don't work. If there's a, an opportunity to pivot and change it, let's look at that opportunity, let's see what the right thing to do is. But as somebody said uh, the other day to me, she, she said, I just want to I just want to break this, I just want to break it, but it keeps, it keeps coming back to me that it's not broken, so I know that there's something in this business and she's, keep test she's uh, carrying, on, carrying on with it. Um, so what NDRC will help you do is um, it'll discover and validate your business model. Uh, work on your leadership skills, um, your, give you the access point to your network um, and build a rock solid case for investment. So we've, we've many proof points for that. Um, just before I wrap up, I just wanted to talk to you about some of our pre-accelerator activities. So prior to the program, um, we are, we've been running um, five to six week um, uh, groups, uh, five to six week blocks of, of workshops that we term um, pre-accelerators. Um, we called it, we particularly ran one last November, um, uh, it was called Seed Lab and the reason that we decided to run it, as I said earlier on, we know that it was challenging for science-based promoters to find the right commercial people to work with or the right commercial people to, to test their propositions or test their assumptions um, and we also know that doing it alone is just, it's just like lonely for one and it's really, really difficult. So um, giving people the opportunity to work with other people who might have a different um, and really valuable perspective um, on a technology or on a, the potential use for that technology and in, in various markets um, is a good thing to do. So we created Seed Lab and it gave the opportunities to the venture promoters <coughs> to meet commercial people, to form teams, there was no contractual obligation, they worked together for, for five or six weeks and um, we had a schedule of, of workshops that they worked through um, and they 
the output of it was uh, to, to come forward with an investment case. So we reached out to vis visionary researchers in, within the third level institutions, um, also entrepreneurs and people who had a tremendous commercial experience that they could bring to bear um, on the teams. And it was also for us, uh, for NDRC Venture Lab, to actually find exciting opportunities that might fit the bill for Venture Lab. Um, so it was, uh, as I said, it was five, if it was five weeks, um, um, I think I've repeated most of that, um, but importantly I suppose there was no contract at that point. People were giving their time and everybody knew that regardless of whether they went on to pitch for Venture Lab and 100k um, of investment, that uh, there was um, there was a, uh, it was it was a good opportunity to experience in a very very short frame time frame um, what NDRC is about, um, what we like to do, um, and but also give give the opportunity to meet new people and uh, do some early stage customer validation. So these were just some of the the, the photos of uh, people in action um, at Seed Lab. So the process for Seed Lab was that we asked the researchers um, after a pitch workshop to pitch their ideas to, um, the, to the entrepreneurs. Uh, then they did a networking session and they then matched. It was a bit like picking the school team, uh, the, the football team, but people ma matched up uh, with each other. And in some cases, it worked out really well. There was a couple of cases where for we're all human, it didn't work out. Um, but in, in most cases, we had teams of two or three who, s who went to the workshops and started. So we had 13 <laughs> teams in total, um, and six went into the Venture Lab pipeline um, for this last round. So in terms of our timeline, there's no dates on this because it's really from now. Uh, the best thing if you're interested in Venture Lab at all or in DRC in general is to connect with us now. Start to follow us on Twitter, um, hashtag best place to start. Um, uh, on our, the NGRC I2I is our, is our Twitter link as well. Um, <coughs> Follow us on LinkedIn. Get to know us. Come to come to come to our events. Um, come to the building. Um, meet some other startup teams. Find out of other people who who may have gone through some of our programs. Talk to Dave. He's a a, a Launchpad um, alumnus as well. Um, and and figure out the next timelines um, that might suit you either for Launchpad or for Venture Lab. Um, keep an eye on our activities, our pre-accelerator activities, because they're a great opportunity in a short space of time to figure out if you know that if the thing that you're thinking about um, uh, is something that you want to test, and you know, do you do you want to do a startup? Um, are you interested in that? Do you think your technology is disruptive enough? Um, something like a five-week program can really um, help uh, test uh, a lot of those thoughts. Um, so it's connect, form, build, and then uh, once you get onto the program, um, you know, the, the world's your oyster after that. Um, so we are launching Venture Lab 2 um, in the next few weeks. As I said, Venture Lab 3 will have plans for that towards the end of the year. Um, these are our contact details. Um, you can reach out to me, connect with me on, on LinkedIn, um, and uh, absolutely happy to have a chat with anybody here and uh, no matter how early stage your idea is um, we certainly would have um, uh, hopefully some insight to help you um, make uh, some earlier decisions and, and if you want to understand about some of the commercialization um, aspects or things that interest us do give me a shout. So that's um, my presentation and happy to take uh, questions and answers. I know there's a lot of information there but